This is the S&P 500 one month overview reading for the month of July 2023. It's currently June 1st, 2023, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the shuffle file for the July reading was created on May 11th, 2023 at 6.10 p.m. Eastern time. That's this video here. And the S&P 500 at the time of this reading is currently uh, 4,221.02, 4, putting the S, uh, SPY ETF at 40, uh, 421.82. All right, so the overall theme and behavior, guys, we have a prominent move to the upside followed by a full retracement, a move up to the upside through a key resistance level on a multi-day scale, followed by a full retracement of that move back down through the same price level. It creates kind of like a capital A in the English English language where the price level that it pokes through momentarily is like the horizontal line in the capital A. Um, triangular kind of poke through, the, through a horizontal line. Um, and it's crossed with... Uh, an attempt to establish or re-establish support behavior around the highest high we have a decline off of the highest uh, highest high for the month um, down to and through support to meet a second support these are supports on the scale of a multi-day uh, chart and uh, break down through multiples uh, and then bounce around uh, on a support and then we break down through more supports um, and off of the low. The behavior around the lowest low, we have an, a prominent move to the upside that'll stand out on at least a one month chart. Um, and it's it, it'll be an unexpected move or an improbable move higher out of like some scary situation or, or serious decline. Um, before we go any further, guys, let's take a look at May, see how we did. So um, I know we nailed the, the, the early low. We had a low on the third, fourth, when we were really leaning towards the fourth. And you can see here on the fourth, we have uh, the low, um, and then we had we were I think a couple I think we were one day off on the high. We actually had here for the 25th, 26th, leaning towards the 26th for the high, and it looks like the 26th ended up being this this green bar here with the high for the following day. Um, but still pretty solid and we also were picking up on a low here we, we thought maybe this could be the uh, the lowest low and as you see guys we really did come technically on an intraday chart we did come to a lowest low there um but we came within close proximity to that price level as far as like the actual candlestick body of the candlestick and we picked up that uh, on that as well so quite a lot of things how about the day trade on the 16th where there was a, a rally this little wick at the top of the body of the candlestick there's this little wick here um right here right uh and that was a rally offering opportunity to open up a short position and then we we declined pretty notably there and that was the day trade that we had um talked about uh you know considering how accurate that is guys and the fact that we did it back in february 26 2023 at 6 24 p.m eastern time i mean that's that's pretty that's saying something guys we're using readings that were done like a year ago today still with still accuracy um all right guys so let's get back into it oh before we do that guys so if you're new to the channel really we're going to get into the day-by-day -day chart behavior here and predict the highs and the lows for the month of july but i want to make sure everybody that's new understands this information we're giving it away this is a lifetime of hardship to figure out how to do this we're giving it away um or almost giving it away for like a minuscule amount um because the intent is that we we intend for people to take 5% of the profits that they make from the information on this channel and they donate it back, back to one of these charities here. Um, these are great charities, guys. Um, just click on the link and donate 5% and then 5% of the profits back to the channel here. We purposefully don't do the trading to stay unbiased. Um, and so with that said, you know, it, it's it's really great and a really great way to support the channel. It's the right thing to do if you utilize this information to make money, uh, to, to, to pay the channel back 5%. It's almost nothing, way less than a stockbroker would charge. Um, and I was a Wall Street broker at one time. I'll just point that out. Um, but so that leaves you with 90%. Make sure that you spend that money out of love. As long as you take that money and you spend it out of love, you follow the rule of karma. The universe is going to send it back to you tenfold through this channel, my friends. And that's the rule of karma. Make sure to follow it always. So on the first, we have a sideways fluctuating rally. I think actually when I look at the at the daily for this, it's more of like a, a sideways rotation with a uh, dip that stands out. And, and the sideways fluctuating rally here that we have on the third, I actually think really is kind of like the energy that carried over from June, where we have kind of like this sideways fluctuating rally in, in, into the end of June. 
but we should see like a sideways rotation excuse me we should see a sideways rotation here um coming out of like a sideways fluctuating rally and there's a trade uh, this is also a half day the third so there's a trade there towards the end of the day um which we'll talk we'll talk about in more detail as this reading progresses um and we do some sideways rotation even into this prince like this prince of discs energy is already starting here um we have sideways rotation and then that turns into a, a, a there's a a pretty notable like pop and drop kind of price swing midday on the fifth i believe um and a lot of sideways kind of behavior but um a high and a low within really close time proximity to each other and then on the sixth we have a decline that um takes us back to it we revisit a support level that we recently visited it might be the one that we saw here on the third um looks like we probably have a gap down or a decline early in the day on the 6th on the 7th um we looks like we have a trough at the end of the day or excuse me at the beginning of the day um and also this little angel here in a in a kind of trough indicated indicative position indicates that we're going to see a lower price level than this um and it looks like that probably takes place out here a bit. But with that said, um, over the weekend, probably a gap up or a pretty big move to the upside early on in the day. Um, and then from a peak or crest, we sell off pretty notably through multiple support levels down to an important price level on a multi-day scale that are stand out. And we kind of like break, break through it momentarily. But there's a there's a pretty notable cash out opportunity um, here on the 10th. So what I would what I would look to do is probably in the midst of this period of volatility on a one day scale here on the on the sixth um there'll be a sharp drop in that period of volatility it takes us back to a support level that we recently re uh, visited um i would utilize that support level as op an entry point to open up a, a long position um i would close that long position um at, when we hit that crest very early in the day on the 10th and possibly even open up a short position around that i probably wouldn't but probably wait a little um, but you could you could utilize the opportunity here probably also on the third I think no you could probably utilize the opportunity here on the tenth uh, when you open up when you close the that long position at, at the crest you could also open up a short position possibly even close it out same day but if not you could close it out on the seventeenth or uh, the twenty like the cusp of the twentieth twenty first so like a, a, a probably a gap up or a rally higher early in the day on the 11th followed by a sharp decline late in the day um taking us into uh a trough um on the 12th and then on the 12th like towards the early afternoon session there's a big move to the upside that'll stand out the um following day we have a sharp drop early in the day to a key support level. That key support level can be relied upon at least for the day um, with a trough early in the day. And it looks like we rally probably from there into the end of the week um, with this prominent move higher on the 14th. That could be fully retraced on the 14th or more likely we see a full retracement of that on the 17th where we have this decline that ends on the 17th. The decline ends with a fast sudden move higher that either takes place at the end of the day on the 17th out of a prominent trough or t that fast sudden move higher uh, it takes place on the 18th or both. Um, but there's an important pr trough there on the 17th and um, opportunity there um, in that trough to close a short position or in the midst of a, uh, a move out on a one day chart out of a uh, trough or in, uh, out of like a one month kind of scale trough there. Um, there'd be a prominent move to the upside on a one day chart and I, i'd utilize that opportunity there to open up a short position that could be closed on the 20th 21st um, on the 18th we do sideways rotation along key support and then a big move to the upside standing out on a multi-day chart we hit key, uh, key resistance around the morning session maybe mid-morning or midday um we hit, hit key resistance on the 19th there midday um key resistance on a multi-day scale and we break down from that resistance with consecutively lower spikes up on the way down um probably what we see is a gap down on the 20th and then the establishment of support with a move higher and then some more sideways rotation at a higher support followed by a probably another gap down on the 21st let me take a look at those dailies just to be sure more sure see if anything is illuminated so it looks like overall bullish day but it it comes out of like a, a gap down or out of a decline early in the day and then the 21st 
Um, and then it looks like probably at the end of the day on the 21st, we have a crest. There's the Magus card. And remember, out of the low, we've got this um, unexpected move to the upside. So don't be like, don't don't be, be caught off guard by that big move out of the low, which I think probably is, is early in the day on the 21st. Um, this is probably here around the open. Um, either, that, either that or it's midday. But probably a crest early afternoon. So sideways behavior there and a big move out of that probably taking place really on the 24th, probably a gap up over the weekend. We'll probably see a gap up or either a gap up over the weekend or at the end of the day here on the 21st, there's a significant move to the upside. But I'd be utilizing any sharp drops on one day scales here on the 20th to the 21st to open up a long position. Um, because this is kind of like where we have the turnaround. There's either a crest at the end of the day on the 21st, or we see it um, first thing in the morning on the 24th, and then we decline on the 24th. A lot of price change on the 24th. Um, on the 25th uh, trough early in the day, we do decline to and through support on a multi-day scale, meet a second support and rotate sideways along that support. Probably gap up on the 26th to a, uh, an, a prominent crest that we sell off from down to and through key support on a multi-day. We do a U-shape reversal below that key support, come back and reuse it as support. And then it looks like midday, there's a pretty notable move to the upside and a speech as well. Um, on, on there on the 26th, something, somebody speaking, something that can be trusted is being spoken about there. Um, and on the 27th, the key resistance level, um, this is probably, so, so there's a lot of indication of a highest high possibly taking place here. So it might be that we see the same price level that we see on the 31st, we see here on the 26th, 27th somewhere so we could have a highest high between the 26th 27th or we could have a highest high on the 31st hard to and hard to, to kind of narrow it down sorry guys sometimes it's not easy to, to narrow down um, but it's somewhere around here the 26th 27th or 31st there's a trough in between here on the 28th and keep in mind also another prominent move to, uh, unexpected move here on the 28th a lot of back in uh, it looks like probably a lot of mixed behavior on the 28th but good opportunity there it's more to the upside um, taking us probably into a peak or crest on the 31st that we sell off from is my my sense. Um, and then the sneak preview for the following month for August is this sideways um, rally along a diagonal, excuse me, a, diag uh, a rally along a diagonal trend line. It's not sideways, a rally along a diagonal trend line that breaks through horizontal resistance, meets a second resistance, and then pulls back to somewhere between those two price levels. That's kind of like a rally continuing out of this July energy. When we look at the one year reading, we've got um, this Ace of Wands uh, rally that offers opportunity to open up a short position, but it, it's at the end of, of July, and then it, 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 it's almost as though the rally extends into August, where we see the Princess of Wands as the high for August, towards the end of August, um, and these two energies are really the same rally, so we rally out of, um, we probably see that high around the, the um, Satiety card that we have here on, on the 10th, 11th, or on the 10th, probably see a notable high there. And then we rally to another uh, another higher, a higher price level here towards the end of August. So I would be, I'd be looking for opportunities. I probably wouldn't get into a short position here in, at the end of July, but I'd, I'd look at, at this these two cards here as the same rally and look for the high, um, the rally into the high towards maybe the third week of August where then I'd probably wanna get into a short position. All right, guys, that's the S&P 500 for July 2023. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Um, and then also, guys, uh, so you know, this this one month, you could have got this reading way sooner if you were on the free mailing list, um, which you get at our website, Tarot for Traders. Uh, I believe right here on the first page at the bottom, um, you sign up for the mailing list and you get the free newsletter. It's the fast, it's the soonest that you can get the S&P 500 monthly prediction for free. The soonest you can get it um, the only time, the only way you can get it sooner than that is uh, by getting early access on the website, um, which you do so here. Early access gets you access to all of these public predictions way sooner than they come out on YouTube. Twenty nine bucks a month. Great way to support the channel. Um, and this one month reading for the S&P 500 is a good example of what we do with these uh, paid versions of the uh, one months that we do for all of these other tickers and crypto symbols. Each one of these, the paid version is really what we were talking about in, uh, in the reading here today about the trades that we see for the month. That's the type of stuff that you get in the paid version for those specific stocks, the best trades that we see throughout the month. And it looks like there's possibly a day trade here I left out. Um, 
We have three pokes through the same price level followed by a sharp drop uh, as one of the trade points. So around that, that th three pokes through the same price level, that important resistance level on a multi-day scale. Um, I'd look to get into a short position and then I'd close that short position. Matter of fact, no, I would look to get into a, a long position in the midst of that sharp drop and then close that long position either the following day on the 28th or on the 31st. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow that rule of karma. As always, 5% forward, 5% backwards. Make sure to spend that money out of love and the universe is going to send it back to you tenfold through this channel. I'll see you guys on the next one.